Welcome to Mail Merge Name Tense. Um, I'm adding a logo to it or adding filtering so you don't send to everybody in your database. This is being generated thanks to an inquiry by Gil who wanted to add an image to his Name Tense for his event. So here we go. Here's sort of the basic Name Tense and if you haven't seen the video for how to do the double sided Name Tense, I would suggest that you go ahead and watch that first. So I'm going to go to mailings, I'm going to start my mail merge, and these are labels. Okay. I don't want any of the uh, Avery labels, so I'll just click cancel. What this does is it lets the mail merge toolbar know that this table that I've created is going to be laid out as labels. So what I've done is I've already put in my, my fields from my database, and I flipped them in the direction that I wanted them to go. So I'm going to insert a picture now. So I'm just going to choose a picture, and I have lots to choose from. I'm going to choose this cute little flower, and I bring that in. And you'll see this little icon. If you're in 2013, it's called Layout Options. If it's in any previous version, it's under the term Wrap Text, and it'll look like a little dog. So you can choose either one. And what I'm going to do is move this image on in front of text. And this allows me to move it around uh, within relationship to the text. If I want to change the orientation of this image, I can either rotate it freehand, and again I'm just forcing it, and you can see it aligning with the text. You want to make sure that you have it far enough out so that when your names fill in it doesn't bump into your image, and we'll look at that in the preview. Now here's the funny thing. You would think that I would just add the picture here and then when I update labels it'll all work, but for some reason it doesn't work quite that way. So we're going back to the mailings. We're going to go to the right and insert fields and you'll probably see the word update labels, but I've kind of condensed this. So here's the icon for update labels. And so you'll see that here's my little flower on each one. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about that next record that is over top of that and you can see I'm just moving it around and it's fine. If I wanted to use the same picture, I could, uh, or I could use a different picture. So let's just use a different picture just so you can see that process again. I'll go to pictures, and this time I'll choose this cute little tulip and bring that in. So I brought it in over here, okay, and I'm going to move my little flower out of the way, and I'm going to go to the layout, and I'm going to change to in front of text. And I'm going to put it on this side. And I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to make it 90 degrees that way. The end is kind of moved out of the way here. And you could be very precise about this alignment. I just want you to see the idea of this is how you get the picture on a different level. So now I'm going to copy that tool up and I'm going to put it in the last cell as well. Doesn't matter where it lands up at first, there it is. Okay? So now the, the trick about that um, update labels is when we went to the mailings and we hit update labels, you'll see that next record is in each field of this table cell. So when we preview, you see that this is the different people uh, in each row of the data. And we want this to be a double-sided name tense. So we want this name to repeat here and then the name to repeat in the next block. So we just need to get rid of the next record field. Just delete that. Make sure it goes away entirely. This one is where we want the name to change, so that's okay to keep next record. And we want to get rid of next record in this last cell. So now if I preview the results, you'll see that those names repeat, and all looks good. If I go through my preview, we get to the longer name, and that's not bumping into my, my image, so I'm okay. If it were, I would just make an adjustment now. And you see those names are being repeated. Uh, in the preview, you don't have to worry about that. It's going to print correctly. You're not going to get it multiple times, but every time you move the print preview, it's as if you're starting on that record. Okay. The final thing I want to show you 
is the ability to um, edit your recipient list at this point. So let's click on the edit recipient list and we have lots of information in here. Okay. And one of the things that we have, one of the fields is department. And let's say that I found out the mathematics department has another event that day. So anybody from math can't attend my event. Remove the people that are in the mathematics department. And if, when you're using Excel to filter, you can be more selective. And I could just choose not to show the mathematics folks. Here, if I choose math, I'm only going to get the math. So what I'm going to do over here is just uncheck those two people and now they won't be on our list and then I'll bring back all the departments but you'll see that these people will not be on our mail tent list all right uh, if I wanted to sort in alphabetical order and that's what I do for my last name because that makes a lot of sense when you're printing these out we would like to sort this from first to last name so now I'm going to close this little preview, and if I go to the end now, we'll see that there is no one from the math department. And we could even make sure about that because we could do a find recipient, and we could look in a particular field and department, and we could say find math. You don't have to put in the entire amount, and there's nothing there. So to prove that that would have worked, we can say find English, and it will take us to the next record that has English. Okay, so you can see I can preview through all the people from the English department. Okay, so that's it. So now. Um, I want to actually finish and merge. So I'll finish and merge, I'll edit to individual documents, and I can say all records. Even though I filtered, it will filter out and we won't have the math folks. And here's what our tents would look like if we were to print them. So I hope that's helpful to you, Gil, and for anybody else who wanted to know uh, how to add images to your name tents. I'm Sandy McVeigh. And if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and uh, or contact me, and I will try and help you. Thanks very much. Have a great day.